Okay, <clears throat> good morning guys. Um, thank you all for joining. This is a little quick talk on the sports scholarship program that we offer here in UL, um, the UL Sport Academy High Performance Program. So I'll run through some of the slides here for you and then um, if you have any questions, if you want to pop them into the chat option and I'll answer them at the end for you um, so that we can get through all your questions. Okay. So first off we have, um, there's a, a little video that you'll see, you'll also see it on the Sports Scholarship Program page on the website and you'll also see it on the UL Sports um, section of the Sports Scholarships. So hopefully you can see that here now on your slides and play it here for you now. Okay, so that was just a short little video of some of our sports scholars um, and this is kind of some of the stuff that we do for them. We're very keen on promoting them as well um, and you will see that throughout the presentation. We're very proud of the fact that they are high performance athletes and that they belong to the UL sport program as such. Um, in the video you would have seen Sinead Lochran. Sinead was an Irish hockey player. You would have seen Tom Morrissey who was a a dual all Ireland hurling medal winner. Uh, Leah Mansell was in the video. She's the under 23 downhill mountain biking champion. Um, you also had Caroline Hayes, who was just back from Tokyo after competing in the triathlon. Thomas Barr is in it. He was also in Tokyo competing in the 400 hurdles. Uh, Kira Neville was in it. She just missed out on qualification due to an injury, but hopefully she'll be going to um, the Paris Games. So that's kind of the level of the athlete that we have here in UL um, at the top end of it to give you a flavour of what's here. OK, I'll just go on to our next slide here. Hopefully you're you're all in time with me here. Um, UL Sports mission is about uh, delivering the best and most inclusive university sport and well-being that we can in the country. 
in an environment that's recognised internationally as a centre for sports excellence. So we pride ourselves on our facilities here in UL. Uh, we have world class facilities when it comes to sport. Um, and you'll see that later on in the presentation as well, where we have um, fantastic indoor and outdoor facilities. And, and we're very proud of the fact that we call ourselves Ireland Sport, Ireland's sporting campus. And a lot of students would come for the facilities that we offer here and the coaching that goes with it. So to deliver the most, the best and most inclusive sport. So we cover all sports. So as you go through the presentation as well, you'll notice that I have some sports listed. If your sport isn't listed, doesn't mean that we don't do it here. It just means that maybe no one has been on a sports scholarship program for that sport yet. Um, it's not that we don't recognize it. If you're at a high level or an elite level in your sport, then there is no reason why you can't apply for a scholarship um, within the, the college. Okay. I suppose what UL Sport does is <clears throat> we look after all the sport on campus and a big part of it is the high performance program or the sports academy. So we look after the management of the facilities, the developing plans for sports, plans for the future, uh, communication, marketing, etc. Um, we also support, support and develop student sport for students on campus. Um, both at participation and elite level, because there are up to 15,000 students on campus. So obviously the elite aspect of it is only a tiny percentage. <clears throat> so we look after all levels of sport and participation is also a big one. And we do this in conjunction with the student life clubs and societies, which is the UL Wolves. Um, so that, that will be part of our remit as well. Um, UL Sport initially started off really small um, in one building. And now we basically have five facilities. So we have the uh, the arena, which is in the building where the, the pool and the sports hall and the gym is housed. We have uh, all weather pitches and grass pitches on both sides of campus, the north and the south. That's three of the facilities. We have the boathouse, which is the fourth one. Um, so for all our rowers on the call, we have a boathouse. And then the fifth one is just off campus. It's in Killaloo. It's the adventure center. And we're the only university that has its own adventure center. So they take care of sailing, windsurfing, kayaking, orienteering, archery, all your outdoor um, all your outdoor pursuits, activities, really. OK, and then our newest facility, which is also here in the arena building, is the climbing wall. Um, and that's a fantastic facility that we have. It's the tallest climbing wall in the country. It's 18 metres high inside. And definitely when you get on campus, if you haven't had the opportunity already, make sure that you pop in to see the climbing wall because it's uh, I think you have to see it to believe it when you see how high it is. Okay, and I have some pictures on the, the presentation here at the end, so you'll be able to see it as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> from the point of view of the sports scholarships, we're we're relatively young in a sports scholarship program. Uh, it was designed to disp to support elite athletes in pursuing their uh, career in sport, but also undertaking their studies. So the, the mission of it, if you like, is to support elite athletes in pursuing and excelling in their sport while undertaking their studies. At the end of the day, the reason you come to UL is because you want to get your degree or your master's. So it's about your academics. And then it's a bonus that you are at the high end of your sport for both you and for us. So we believe that we have the platform to help you to get you where you want to go with the four years that you're in college. It provides a great platform for you to focus on your colleges and your training. You have all your facilities on your doorstep. You have a number of services around as well that will help you when to get you where you want to go. So we think that college and third level is a, a huge bridging uh, facility, if you like, to get you from where you are right now to the next level in your sport. And that's why you would see quite a lot. Some students will be gone out of college before they get to that world stage or the Olympic stage, if that's their um, if that's what they want to get to, if that's their in their pursuit. Um, because college is used at the, as that bridge to get them to where they want to go. OK, so in 2016, when it was launched, we had 28 scholars on the programme and it has grown exponentially in the last five years. Um, we went from 28 to 33 um, and so on. In, 21, in 2021, we had 89 on the programme um, and this year we have 97. So our aspiration would be to get the program to about 120, 130 athletes because we don't want to lose sight of that family ethos that we um, have here in UL where 
every athlete kind of knows every other athlete that, that's on the program and we have a great relationship with them as well where we meet them on a one-to-one -one basis so we don't want to get it too big we wanted to keep it maybe around the 120 130 mark at a max okay and that will depend as well on the caliber of athlete that's coming into the program um because the standard is quite high to get onto the sports scholarship program and i'll go into that a little bit more in a, in a few minutes so you'll see there on your slide that's how much it's grown um it's worth noting as well in 20 2021 uh, we honored all the payments for the scholarships and their scholarship program even though they wouldn't have represented us in sport because of obviously COVID hitting but we still felt that they were training away and they were doing their parts just because they didn't get to represent you well that was taken out of their control so we honored the scholarship program um, which I think was a big thing for UL to acknowledge and it shows where they prioritize sport as a whole um, here on campus and it is it is a massive part of campus life which is great to see this year you'll see there's 97 and we're going to the breakdown of that in a second you'll see kind of who we have male and female and there are about 30 new into the program this year because obviously you would have lost them last year who were four tiers and finished so you have um 97 athletes on the program from the point of view of the sports scholarships and what you get when you're a sports scholar you get sports service support so that'll be one of the the first things you get so you get access to fitness testing you get access to um coaching uh, you get access to the facilities and um, there's mentorship programs so you have facilities and coaching if we take that one first so obviously you have access to the facilities where you're going to be training for your designated sport Every scholar is a member of the sports arena, so they get access to the pool, sauna, steam room, the gym, the weights area, etc. You're all members once you're a sports scholar. That's part of your scholarship. Um, each scholar as well gets a training grant, and we'll go into that in a little bit more depth in a sec, um, depending on the level you're at. The sports service support is we would run seminars for our athletes so that we can, we, we firmly believe in the athlete being the program being athlete centered and it's a people program so we're trying to develop the people as well as the athletes so when do you come out after your four or five or if you do your master's phd etc a number of years from college we would like to think that you're a more rounded person as well as a better athlete so we provide services around that as well um depending on the scholarship you're on as well accommodation is included in some of them accommodation is paid for um registration fees in the college again depending on the scholarship you're on and i'll go into it in a minute um they are also either subsidized or paid for depending on the level of scholarship you're on and then one of the biggest ones that we think is the mentoring and academic support that we have so the mentoring and academic support is we have a high performance policy here on campus we're one of the only universities to have it to date where all our faculties are on board as well to support these sports scholarship athletes so what that means is if an athlete needs potentially um, further tutoring because they may have missed classes due to international camps or international competition or national camps or national competition, that's available. Um, a big one is if exams clash with camps you might have or international or national again training, that there is some flexibility around it. So it's seen as uh, flexibility around your academic learning. Um, depending as well the level you're at, if you're on an Olympic cycle, for example, um, and you're going to be going to the Olympics, uh, there is an option as well in some of the courses to split your course so that you can take that block out before the Olympics that you potentially would need to train. So there is a lot of flexibility around the academic side of the house, um, which is great. And the lecturers are very much on board and very much supportive of our high performance athletes as they are with all our students, to be fair. Uh, we believe that it's about getting the balance right. So like I said at the start, you're here to get your degree or your qualification out of college. OK, that's that's the first part for us. That's paramount. OK, and then it's about your athletics as well, your athleticism that you have and how we can help you progress that, whether that be to be a, a regular on your county team, whether that means getting on a, a European under 23 team, it might be getting on the world stage it might be getting on the olympic stage it depends where you're at okay so we believe that we can help you to do that so it's about getting the balance right it's about the dual career so the dual career means the athlete and the academics okay so we ha also have a dual career policy that we have in place here in ul and that's to help us to ensure that you can do that both of them it it's of no benefit to us 
if you are on the European stage, but you're failing your classes. OK, because at the end of the day, it's of no benefit to you because you're not going to get your qualification. So then it's not a win win for us. We want you getting your qualification and excelling in your sport. And there is a massive learning curve around that. And there's a time management piece around it and there's an adjusting around it. And we're fully aware of that. And that's why we're here to help you um, to do that. So that's your dual career um, path that we would like to think that we can help you to do because we're athlete centered. Um, <clears throat> you have three different types of scholarships. So you have a gold, a silver and a bronze. So in the gold scholarship, it's worth in excess of 10,000 euro. So your full on campus accommodation is covered. So the fees for the accommodation is covered. Your registration fees to college are covered. So that's 3000 euro. There is sports science support. So I would have spoke about them earlier. So they would be things like fitness testing or DEXA scanning or biomechanical testing, depending on your sport. Um, there's a training grant given to you. So the training grant is for gold is a thousand euro. So that's split into two payments of 600 and 400. And that grant for all the, the scholarships um, categories can be used whatever way you want. That's up to you. So it might be extra food. It might be your protein supplements. It might be towards physio. It may be towards uh, travel. It can be whatever way you want. So that's actually the, it's actually a physical financial grant. So you get that into your account. OK, so that's a thousand euro if you're on gold. Then you get used to the facilities, like I mentioned earlier. Every sports scholar is a member of the UL Sports Arena. So you're set up um, and then you just swipe your card and you come in your student card and you have access to the facilities. So you have the 50 meter pool, the sports halls, the gym. There's an elite training weights room as well. Um, and obviously you have the pitches and stuff. If you're part of a team sport, you have the hurling walls, etc. So you just need to link in with us and we'll make sure that you can get access to that to facilitate your training. And then we have some of the uh, the best coaches around when it comes to a lot of the sports and we pride ourselves on that too because it's no good having great athletes if we have no one to coach them. So there is a great coaching structure in the majority of the sports we have here on campus. And if it's a, a case that we don't have the coach for the level of the sport that you're at, we'll work with your coach that's coaching you right now. And there's a synergy between the two of them because there is a big learning curve, like I said, when you come on campus and you're coming from school to college. Um, so we'll work with the coach you have, or it may be a case of the coach you have, we'll work with the coaches we have as well. So to ensure that there's a, a synergy there and that the athlete doesn't lose out, that's the main thing. OK, so that's your goal. On your silver, um, it's a percentage of your accommodation is paid um, half your registration is paid. So that's fifteen hundred. Uh, the same applies for all scholars. They all get the sports science support. They all get the training grant. So the training grant, if you're on a silver or a bronze, is 700 euro. Um, and again, split into two payments of 400 and 300. OK, so coaching and the UL sport arena membership. Again, everyone gets that. So to be honest, from the point of view of obviously the financial aspect is different in gold, silver and bronze, but we don't see any of the scholars as any different. You're all treated the same. You all get to go to the same seminars. You're all afforded the same opportunities when it comes to sports science supports. It's not a case of, oh, he or she is on gold, so they're going to get X, Y, Z. The only difference, which I know is obviously a big difference, but the only difference is the accommodation and the registration fees. Other than that, everyone is treated the same. Um, the bronze, you will see there's no accommodation or registration fees pays in the bronze. So it's sports uh, science support. They get a training grant of 700 euro and then coaching and again access to the membership of the arena. All scholars as well get uh, gear or kit. So everyone gets uh, T-shirts, quarter zips, track pants so that you're all identifiable. And then when you're asked to do things for UL, that we're all branded the same and that that UL sport um, academy is going out and that people know as well that you're a high performance athlete. Um, so that's a, an important piece of it. Um, from the point of view of when you apply and how you apply, you don't necessarily apply for a gold, a silver, a bronze. You just apply for a sports scholarship. OK, so anyone who's coming into college or in college can apply. So once you're a full time registered student of UL, you can apply. Or if you have obviously UL on your CEO and you're thinking of coming here, you can apply as well. OK, if you're not through the CEO and your courses in UL, that's perfectly fine as well. If you're going to be in UL and a full time student, you can apply for a sports scholarship. OK, so you apply through the, the UL sports uh, website or the UL website. It's on both of them and there'll be an online application there. 
And that'll open on the 3rd of January and it closes on the 1st of March. And the 1st of March is a dead, um, it's a deadlock uh, closing date as such. There is nobody accepted after the 1st of March on midnight. All right. So, and that's due to the volume that we get in. So last year we would have got in excess of about 750 applications for the sports scholarship program. So it is quite popular. Okay, so it's an online form. And basically on that form, you're going to provide personal information, the normal like name, date of birth, address, your school, uh, the course you're going to apply for, uh, where UL is on your CAO, um, general questions like that. Okay, that's in the personal information piece, your sport, obviously. Then there's a piece on what you have done to date in your sport. So this is where you put in your achievements. So what you have potentially won, teams you have been part of that may have won, um, and they don't have to win. This is just to give you an example. Um, but your achievements to date and what you have done. All right. Um, in that as well, if you are like a school prefect or if you are the class leader or if you have Goshka awards or if you've done leadership roles or you have first aid covered or anything like that, put that in there as well, because that shows a, another side to you of your leadership skills, of your willingness to learn. All that kind of information will always help. OK, so put that in there as well. Then there's a piece on your aspirations. So where do you see yourself in four years time realistically? So in four years time, where would you like to be? And on this piece, you need, first of all, you need to be realistic. Um, so for some athletes, the Olympics is the ultimate goal. But do you realistically think you can be at the Olympics in four years if you've never been to a Europeans and a Worlds, for example? So maybe a more realistic goal is for you to get an under 23 European standard, for example, if it was athletics. So make sure they're realistic and then we'll see how we can facilitate to help you to get to those goals. OK, so this is the first part of the process. So the first part is you apply through the online application, opens on the 3rd of January, closes on the 1st of March. Um, and it's it's almost like a sports CV and you fill that up to the best of your ability and send it in. You submit it online, you'll get an email back to say it has been submitted and they all come in here then to a central database where we sort them. OK, so after that, what happens is the process that's involved is the applications come in and um, it's worth noting as well that UL don't offer the reduced points system to college. So you must be confident that you're going to get near or near enough the points for the course you want. So there's no reduced points in UL, OK, for the sports scholarship program. Um, so when you put down your CEO options, make sure that you're there, thereabouts in relation to where you think you're going to come out. I know it's obviously you don't know exactly, but where you think you're going to come out in relation to your points, OK, because there is no reduced points here. So all the applications come in, like I said, they go into a central database. They're then sorted by sport. They are reviewed by subject matter experts in the sport. So athletics will look at the athletics ones, basketball coaches will look at the basketball, GA coaches will look at the, at the GA, etc. in all the disciplines. After that, they're shortlisted. So people are shortlisted and to come to interview. Last year we interviewed in excess of 120 um, out of all the applications we got. So they were obviously done last year online. They'll probably be back to face to face next year, hopefully. OK, so interviews then will happen in early April, so it'll be April 2022. Um, there is no set number as to how many we interview. It purely depends on the caliber of athlete we get. So if we get 15 outstanding athletes in athletics, we will interview the 15. If we get three, we'll interview the three. So there is no set numbers on number of scholarships that we give to a sport or no set numbers on how many we interview per sport. It's purely dependent on the candidate that we get annually or each year based on their applications. OK, there's provisional offers then go out in May. So you get an email saying that you are or you aren't successful for a scholarship. Um, and then depending on obviously you getting your CEO points to get into college. If you get in, that's fantastic. We'll have you in UL for hopefully four years or some of you go on and do masters, you'll have you for more. And if not, hopefully you'll get the course that you want potentially in another college so that you'll be able to represent um, someone else. And the, the main thing is you'll get your degree or your qualification that you want. OK, then once you come into college, there's obviously a settling in period. Um, so we do initial meetings with you just to make sure that you're all OK. There's an athlete charter that you will sign. So this is effectively like a, a contract between you and us. 
um, contract for the want of a better word. Okay, it's not a, a legally binding document. It's kind of a guideline of what we expect from you and what we commit to doing back for you. Um, we explained about the mentor program and ensure that you know who to talk to if you need to. Um, so that we get it in nice and early. Um, we do seminars with you and I'll go through them in a sec. So we do them to make sure that you're a better rounded athlete and that you get more from it than just your own sport. And there's also the interaction with all the other athletes because they're all done together. And then we do one to one meetings as well. We try and do one each semester just to see how you're getting on, how's college going, how are you getting on in your house with the people you're living with. Some of you will potentially be in athlete houses, so they'll be all athletes. Others might not live on campus, so it can be different. So just to make sure that you're all okay and that you're getting on all right with your course. And then the scholarships are reviewed annually and they're reviewed based on your performance um, athletically and academically. Okay. So like I said at the start, it's no good for us if you're excelling in your sport, but you're only scraping through college. Um, so we look and see, can we help you that way? Uh, there's also an aspect of representation for UL. So if the sport is on campus, so for example, if you play Kabogi, it will be expected that you will play in the Ashburn with UL. If you play hurling, it will be expected that you play in the Fitzgibbon team with UL if asked to do so um, as a sports scholarship. Obviously, as a fresher, you can't play Fitzgibbon, but you would be playing on the fresher team. So it, it's a given that if you're on a sports scholarship or a sports scholarship athlete, that you would represent UL to the best of your ability where possible. There is also that ambassador role. So the ambassador role is you are ambassadors for UL when you become well, really, when you become an athlete, you're an, or sorry, when you become a UL student, you're an ambassador for UL. But when you're a sports scholar, you're also an ambassador for the sports scholarship program. So we would expect you to hold that in high esteem and not to be doing anything you shouldn't be doing, basically. So that you are performing as an athlete uh, to the best of your ability and representing UL well while doing that. OK, so that's the process. So the applications come in. They're shortlisted by subject matter experts. You're called to interview if successful based on your application. The interview takes place. It's usually a three person uh, panel that interview you. Um, and they take, they're, they're informal, but yes, we need to get some information from you. So they take about 15, 20 minutes per athlete. Um, it's a chat about your application and your aspirations and where you want to go, etc. And for us to get to know you. Uh, like I said, provisional offers go out in May, 2022. They go out before the change of mind in case you need to change your mind in relation to if you do or you don't get offered a scholarship and you might need to put another college higher up on your CAO potentially, um, if that's an option for you. Then settling in period, which I mention, mentioned because it is a big transition, change it over to college and then they're reviewed annually. It's also worth noting that if you don't get a scholarship in first year, it doesn't mean you can't apply in second, third and fourth year. You absolutely can. Um, and when you get it in first year, it's also reviewed that if you don't keep up your end of the deal, which is, like I said, representing UL, being an ambassador, working hard, passing your classes, yeah, your scholarship as well, you can lose your, lose your scholarship. But if you don't get one in first year, don't be disillusioned and say, oh God, I didn't get a scholarship, I can't apply anymore. You can, you can apply every other year you're in UL. And we have situations of students who didn't get them in first year or in second year, and they got them when they got the third and fourth year because they really applied themselves to their sports. They improved dramatically. They got involved with the club here on campus and became a key member or a key part of that sport. So there is opportunities there as well. From the point of view of the seminars I mentioned earlier on, this would be a, a flavor of what we would do for the athletes. Uh, these are just some examples. So we try and run four in semester one and four in semester two. So you can see there on the screen, we look at things like nutrition, sports psychology, drugs in sports, study skills, time management, uh, peer support, media training is a big one at the minute um, because obviously athletes are all online. So they're on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, they're everywhere. So that's a big part of it and how you handle it. And even for some of the higher level athletes, how to handle the media and how to handle questions and handle yourself in front of the camera, basically. OK. So that's important as well. And this goes back to being athlete centric. And we believe the athlete is the center of the program and how we can make them better overall. OK, so it's the, it's the whole package, it's the holistic approach. It's not just about making you a better athlete as such. In relation to this year, I mentioned we have 97 
athletes on the programme. So there's 97 across 18 sports currently this year, or 18 disciplines. There's 39 females and 58 males. So you can see it's a 38-56 split. Most years we had almost a 50-50. Um, and it's worth noting that this year would have been close to 50-50 as well, but because the way the points went, um, we lost a number of the female athletes uh, that were offered scholarships, didn't get the points for UL. So it's not that we don't offer 50-50. We pride ourselves on the fact that our females are treated exactly the same as the males. There is no difference here on campus. Whatever any of the male teams get, the female teams get as well. There is no, there is absolute parity between both. Um, and that's a big thing for us here in UL as well. You'll see some of the sports there listed. So you have your, your normal uh, big hitters, as we'll call them, your athletics, your basketball, your GA, um, across all four codes, your rowing, your rugby, your soccer, your swimming, your triathlon. They'd be our biggest ones. Um, GA would be the biggest across all the, the scholarships. So out of the 97, there's approximately 40 of them are GA over the four codes. Um, but you'll see in there as well, you have handball, you have equestrian, you have hockey, you have mountain biking. Um, there's a few of the other um, sports as well. And I, my point on this slide is that just because your sport isn't listed there doesn't mean we won't offer that scholarship. We potentially may. So if your support, if your sport is, for example, karate or Irish dancing, if you compete at a high level, there's no reason why you shouldn't apply and potentially you may get a scholarship in UL. OK, so just because it's not there doesn't mean we don't support it. We do. So whatever your high level sport is, if you're at a really high level, then by all means, put in your application and it will be reviewed the same as all the other sports. All right. Um, from the point of view of the facilities that I mentioned earlier on, you should see a slide there now in a sec with the sports hall. So we have a four court multipurpose sports hall for those of you who haven't been here. Um, this is it set up for a basketball match, so you can see the bleacher seating is out. So we have uh, 17 seating for 1700. Um, it's like a theatre effect, so you've seating on both sides and at the back. Uh, the basketball court is only marked for basketball. So again, that's one of the only ones in the country. We pride ourselves in UL on being the first to do things. Um, so we, we have one of the only basketball specific marked courts. Most multi-purpose halls will have lines going across them for different sports. On our centre court, it's only basketball. So then we have three courts, so one, one at one side and two at the other side. So it's a four court multi-purpose hall. So they, we have on those markings, we can facilitate 12 badminton courts. We have four basketball courts. We have two soccer, two volleyball um, within the courts. That's how it can be divided up for sports. Up on the top, you can see the jogging track. So the jogging track is suspended from the ceiling. So that's used for warm ups and stretching and cool down areas for classes um, and for athletes when you come in. So if it's a miserable night outside, sometimes they come in, do their warm up, their stretching, um, their pre session mobility, and then they'll go out and do their session and come back in, potentially do their cool down inside. Um, we have a 60 meter indoor sprint track, which is where, as you're looking at the picture, the bleachers that we're looking down effectively, they're on the track right now. So there's a 60 meter sprint track there. Um, what else? On the first floor as well, you have a fully equipped gym with cardio and weights equipment. And on the top floor, we have another weights room. Um, probably by the time you get here, there will be another cardio room upstairs. The plan is to have that done for September of next year. And we have another weights training facility on the North Campus as well that we use for our high performance athletes where they have exclusivity and there's nobody in there, only the high performance athletes at those designated times. OK, so that's for anyone who plays indoor sports. That's our indoor hall um, and the facilities are world class. OK, the next one is the pool. So we have a 50 meter swimming pool, 10 lane, 50 meter swimming pool, 25 meters wide. The movable floor on the first part of the first 23 meters of the pool so it can drop to be full depth. Um, obviously, you have all your obvious ga swimming gala equipment, so your uh, electronic time and your starting blocks, etc. At the back of the pool, you have a 25 meter diving pool with two diving boards, a meter high and a three meter board. Um, off this, you obviously have changing rooms, uh, lockers, you have sauna, steam room, etc. And all the regular swimming pool um, facilities that you would have. So that's our swimming pool. So that's where our high performance swim team are based. And it's literally, for those of you who haven't been on campus, it's a three minute walk from Kilmurray Village which makes early morning sessions a little bit easier, I think, because you can be 
out of your bed and in within five minutes um, walk into the campus. OK, and that's something that's great on campus as well. Everything is within walking distance. All our facilities, you can walk to them. OK, the next one is our outdoor facilities. So this is the newest one. This is Maguire's um, pitches, as it's called, or the South Campus. So it has two full uh, GA size floodlit pitches. Again, they're multi-purpose, so they're marked for soccer and GA. So you can see the yellow markings on the photo. They're soccer, so there's four soccer pitches there or two full GA. Um, all floodlit and then just to the right of it you can see the grass pitch so again full grass pitch fully floodlit and there's a, a little uncovered stand on the far side of it. We have two hurling walls so you have a hurling wall and a hurling alley that's just there near the building at the end of the grass pitch um, and then you can see in the picture as well there's numerous grass facilities so they can be turned into soccer, rugby, GAA, whatever is needed for the students to facilitate whatever sports they have or games they might have. Um, it also facilitates community games, which some of you may have been here at. Uh, the Kennedy Cup, which is soccer, the Gainer Cup, which is soccer, Rugby Sevens have been here as well. Um, so it depends on what we need it for. We can transform it into that. In the back of the picture as well, you can see the athletics track, the blue track, and it's in the next slide as well, I think. Um, so that's a 400 meter athletic track recently resurfaced. On the infield, you will see there's a pitch. So the pitch on the infield is where Munster do their training. So that's the Munster rugby squad. And they're actually at the end of the arena building as well. Their high performance center is there. So I think it'll probably pop up there in a sec for you and you'll see it. Um, so like I said earlier, in the arena, you have the climbing wall, you have the sports hall, you have the gym, you have the swimming pool. And it also, at the end of the building, it houses the Munster high performance uh, squad which is great because you can be training and you could have some of the monster lads wandering around and just popping in beside you because they train in the gym as well sometimes um, and they'd be out on the track as well so it's great it's kind of that whole ethos of a high performance training area but yet you could have someone else beside you who's just in to do a walk or run on the treadmill and they just want to participate in sport so there's a great ethos of togetherness here it doesn't matter if you're elite athlete or participation level it's irrelevant um, the next thing we have is the boathouse. So the boathouse, again, on campus, it's situated right beside the river. Um, it has an indoor tank, so it has Ireland's first indoor tank. Um, it's a, an eight-seat boat where they work on technique. It's used a lot for the novices, so that they get used to the technique of rowing and the technique of the stroke. And obviously the water, there's fans in the water that can turn it on so that you get like that wave effect um, so that rowers can learn how to, to row properly. Um, before they potentially go out in the river if they're novices or beginners. Um, it's also great for some of the elite athletes use it if they're doing stroke repetition or high reps or something like that, they can use it in there. At the end of that picture, you'll see they have um, their own kind of self-contained gym down there. So their ergs are in there, there's bikes in there, and they have a weights area in there. So they kind of have their own self-contained unit or high performance center, if you like, down there themselves, the rowers, and it's literally a stone's throw from the river and they're out on the pontoon and they're in the river. They also train in Castle Connell um, in the mornings, which is maybe a, a 10 minute drive from campus. Um, so the rowers use that as well. And a lot of the boats are stored in Castle Connell as well. Um, so get in contact with the rowing as well, if that's something that you're, if rowing is your sport, make sure you follow them because they put up a lot of good stuff on their Instagram account, especially. Um, you should see there two of our climbers going up the climbing wall. So that's our newest facility. So make sure definitely, hopefully we'll get you on campus face to face in January. But if you get the opportunity before dinner, if you haven't already, make sure you pop in and see the wall. It is magnificent. Um, like I said, it's the highest in the country. And there's a number of things in there. We have abseiling facilities. We have a bouldering wall, so no ropes. We have top lead climbing. We have belay climbing. Uh, we have the Olympic a speed wall route and a speed wall. So again, that's important. So if you get a, a chance, pop in and definitely have a look because it, it's worth it. Um, one other thing that we do for our athletes that we think is really important is obviously we promote them because it's a win-win for the athlete and for us, because we like to say that they're on campus and they're UL athletes. And then for them, we hope and we know that they like saying they're part of the UL Sport Program or the UL Sport Academy Program. Um, so we get professional pictures done of all the athletes, head and shoulder shots. We get little walk-up videos done. 
um, that they can use and the athlete gets all of them. So you should see Finn McGeever there. So Finn is uh, part of the men's relay team that went to Tokyo. He's one of our high performance swimmers. So that's one of his photos. Um, we do with all our sports. Um, we have Sean Powder, who's a Cork footballer. So you'll see him in the in the slide there in a sec, I'd say. So he did some photos for us. And we do it as well in your club or your county gear so that you'll be able to use them. So we'll do some photos of you in the UL gear that you get. And then we'll do some in your own as well that you can use. Because one of the things we found is athletes tend not to have pictures of themselves. All right, so you don't seem to have action pictures of yourselves or you might have one that's used over and over again. Um, see as well on the right there we have Miriam, who's our hurdler, um, and we've done some photos for her, and she actually never had photos done before. So, and then the last one you'll see is Owen. So Owen is one of our high performance swimmers again. Um, and again, we just have some fun with them in the pool, doing some different shots, things they may have seen in magazines. We usually ask the athletes coming in, is there a, a photo that you've seen or you like that you'd like to try and recreate? And we'll do our best to recreate it with the photographer that we have here that we get in to do this kind of photo shoot stuff. Um, and they're really useful and they're great for us as well because when you go on and you make a big we can say they're a graduate of UL potentially and then we'll have some photos of you when you were here in UL um, and that's a big part of it as well so uh, it's promotion for you and promotion for us but again the athlete is centered around it okay um, I have one more video that I want to show you hopefully it'll pop up here for you in a sec uh, OK, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of a flavour of a, a flyover in UL for those of you who haven't been on campus. Um, I'm going to try and end this now and go back to you. So if you bear me one sec. OK, so hope, hopefully I'm back with you on the screen there now. Um, the so that's kind of our sports scholarship program. I suppose one of the biggest things is um, the application date. So if you're to take anything away from this, the application is open on the 3rd of January. The application won't go up until probably around the 3rd um, and then they'll close on the 1st of March. So but you can be gathering your information now and have it ready. It's not an onerous task filling up the application. It's a quite simple application to fill up. But um, put the information in there and give yourself every chance. And the other thing is as well, and we tell everyone the same in the interview, is that if you don't get a scholarship, doesn't mean you can't play for UL or you can't represent UL. Um, 
you absolutely can and make yourself known on campus when you come here as well so come and find me and make yourself known um so that we can get you involved with the club and such and maybe you'll get it in second or third year if you don't get it in fourth year or first year my apologies um like i said we are very athlete centered we are very about trying to help you as best as we can from the point of view of a student um i do think we've one of the best facility facilities on campus when it comes to sports obviously i'm biased but that's what athletes tell us that the facilities are setting to none here as well um so by all means do come and, and have a chat with us on campus if you have any questions you might pop them into the chat um and i'll see them once the uh once the call ends i think uh one sec here now uh, yeah we've no new questions in there so if you have any questions um pop them into the chat put your email address in with them and I'll reply to them. Uh, hopefully I've answered the majority of them in the in the little chat there. Um, I really want to thank you for your attention and for jumping on the call. And again, like I said, if you have any questions, there's also a sports scholarship email that you'll see on the page um, where you can apply on the UL website. So drop us an email there if you have any further questions and I'll answer you from there. OK, so again, thanks a million for your attention and best of luck with your continued studies. And hopefully we'll see you in UL next year um, in September. OK, take care. Bye, guys.